The cover page of One Punch Man Chapter 193, titled Worlds I Know Nothing About, features the various House of Takoyaki members, most notably with a cute shot of Mosquito Girl holding a massive syringe over her shoulder. And this chapter opens with a bang. We find Saitama facing off against a hulking giant. His, or maybe her, clothes ripped apart. The creature's veins bulge as they warn Kate Baldi to get out of the way or face the full wrath of dragon blood power. The raging beasts finished their transformation and was now totally nude while rushing towards Saitama with nothing but murder on its mind. It told the heroes to get a good look at the last thing he would ever see. In response, Saitama punched the beast into a million pieces without even breaking a sweat or changing his expression. Honestly, why would we expect anything different? With the nude beast defeated, Saitama was then approached by a group of fully armored men. They couldn't believe what they just saw. Saitama had just defeated Rangor, one of the Dragon Alliance's nine warriors with a single punch. They absolutely needed to know his name. Despite his seemingly unlimited power and his endless list of incredible feats, the One Punch Man himself is still very unknown. But thanks to Saitama, the seal of the cruel dragon was not stolen. For his world-saving action, they felt the need to properly praise him. Saitama was told that his heroic tale would remain in the footnotes of history, but he wasn't too happy to hear that it would just be a footnote. To be fair though, more than 99% of us simply die and are eventually forgotten. A footnote isn't all that bad. Either way, Saitama felt like they were blowing this all out of proportion. He was simply here to have a word after watching a snatching. The armored men wouldn't let him downplay this though. He just saved the world after all. Their mission was a secret, but explaining things to their savior shouldn't be an issue. What came next was pretty crazy. We'd learn of an ancient dragon that once appeared on Earth and was seen as the embodiment of destruction. In only a matter of days, it managed to claim the lives of countless people and utterly scorched the land. Following this merciless rampage, it became known as the Cruel Dragon. Not to be confused with a regular dragon, the generally dangerous beast of legend we've all heard of. I guess this one was especially mean. The legend goes on though. Ancient warriors fought against the creature, and after many sacrifices, they managed to weaken the thing. They then used sealing orbs to split the dragon's key into nine stones, and seal them in various shrines. And that's when we learn who these strange armored men are. They're known as the Saints, and were tasked with protecting the seals. This explanation goes on and on, but to not bore you, allow me to make it simple. The Saints have an enemy organization by the name of Deathbone, and they want to revive the cruel dragon. They've been at war for 800 years, basically an eternal beef. And at that, to be at war for centuries is some grade A, A5 Wagyu beef. Deathbone had been amping up their activities lately, trying to take advantage of the recent increase in monster appearances. This group here was saved by Saitama while transferring the orbs between storage locations. Why they didn't just use Amazon Prime two-day shipping is a worthy question, but I guess these guys are role-playing the Middle Ages based on their armor and weapons. If you felt this explanation was too long, you're not alone. Saitama thought so too. These guys were really talkative. One of the Deathbone members was on the ground now. He was stunned by their defeat here. The loss didn't disrupt his faith though. He called out that the day would eventually come. The day of their cruel master's resurrection and the end of humanity would eventually be at hand. The true believer began passing out as he laughed. His speech was coming to a close, or so it seemed. Saitama suddenly poured a bucket of water on the man, waking him back up. Despite already hearing so much talking here today, he now wanted more. Pulling the bucket of water out of a GTA weapon wheel, Saitama asked the guy when this eventually would be. The man who was now drenched in water suddenly didn't sound very confident. He responded that he wasn't really sure, maybe in 10 years or even 100. He would go on to elaborate, stating that the cruel dragon has been waiting for the seal to weaken, then adding that even if Deathbone is defeated, others will go on and continue the fight and again began to dramatically drift out of consciousness. Another blast of water would flood the man. He propped back up with confusion, asking Saitama if he had another question. The eyes of the men behind Saitama went wide as he said this. It's gonna revive at some point anyway, why not now? With a look of great concern, the armored man that was thanking Saitama earlier now wanted him to explain. Saitama went on to wonder if releasing the cruel dragon now and defeating it for good would bring more serenity for the future. Once their hero, Saitama would quickly turn into their enemy. He grabbed the defeated man that he was drenching in water and ran on water in the direction of the seals while a helicopter chased him from behind. It didn't take long for Kate Baldi to get three of the nine stones. He was on a quest for all nine and he wanted to get it done today. Saitama was on a speed run to collect the Dragon Balls, 
Collecting a number of orbs to summon a dragon? Yeah, this is clearly a Dragon Ball parody. Saitama jetted away, leaving the Saints wondering if he was a new executive member of Deathbone. Saitama even met another one of the Dragon Alliance's nine warriors who looked to be a martial artist in a gi. Saitama took this guy down so fast that there wasn't even a panel for it. His informant tried to tell him that they could have just talked things through and explained that they had the same goal, but Saitama argued that the man shouldn't have attacked him without listening first. And with that, Saitama managed to fulfill the centuries-long ambition of an apocalyptic death cult. He had a friend coming over to play video games later, so he wanted the guy to skip the whole ceremony thing. And with that, the time had finally come. The seal was broken. Try as they might, the saints were too late to stop it. With that, the cruel dragon rose once more in all its horrific glory. Upon emergence, it promised that its festering hatred would be repaid with the extinction of humanity. Just as quickly, it launched a terrible breath attack towards the ones that it owed its freedom to. And in one punch, Saitama killed the creature like all the rest. The informant suddenly realized that he had wasted his entire life for nothing, while the saints rejoiced towards their long-awaited victory. Saitama should definitely be more than just a footnote thanks to that. In the previous chapter, King's birth was heralded as a mythological prophecy, and in this one, Saitama is making history. But speaking of King, Saitama told the entire story to him while they played video games. This was the sort of thing that King believed only existed in manga and video games. Saitama responded that there are whole worlds out there he knows nothing about. And I'm sure it'll be a while, but I hope this is a sign that we'll get a chance to explore more. Especially all that dimensional stuff related to Blast. King acknowledged that it must have been tough. Based on their clothing, it seems like this conversation takes place a little while after Fubuki came by. And yet again, the doorbell rang. King assumed it might be Genos. But when Saitama opened the door, he saw the S-Class hero Flashy Flash holding up a crude drawing. Presumptuously, he came to the conclusion that Saitama was free at the moment. Without so much as a please, he told the bald man to help him look for Monaco. He claimed it to be an important exotic animal related to the Hero Association. With a self-confident smile, Flashy Flash added that if Saitama is useful enough, then he could be his… disciple. Saitama shut the door before he could totally finish his sentence. Flashy Flash froze and questioned the sudden disrespect. He then commanded Saitama to open the door. This, however, opened up another door as Genos was next door and overheard the word disciple be used. King got up and wondered who was there and why Saitama closed the door. I've said the word door a lot of times now, but we're not done. Looking over his shoulder, Saitama responded that the guy seemed annoying. Flashy Flash reiterated that he was here on important business. If Saitama didn't open the door right now, he would be forced to kick it open himself. The shinobi then began to count down from three. But before he could finish, Genos pressed him and wondered what he was doing in front of his master's room. Flashy Flash wasn't sure who Genos was referring to when he said master. This was on account of their respective ranks. He explained that he was only here to meet the A-Class hero Saitama and questioned if Demon Cyborg had a problem with that. Genos retorted that if the hero has something to say, then he can say it to him. He'd also add that Flashy Flash needs to keep it down to 20 words or less. Flashy Flash saw no reason to tell Demon Cyborg his business. Janos responded that if he can't accept the conditions, then he needs to leave. Closing things out by saying that Flashy Flash does not deserve an audience with him. As a fellow S-Class here, Flashy Flash argued that he doesn't need permission from the guy. Janos asked him if that meant he was going to force his way through the door. There was a brief silence between them. Then came the sudden sounds of battle. King shook while Saitama groaned. He asked King if he should stop them, and the gamer said that he should definitely stop them. Saitama opened the door and called out to the two of them, with King in the background. The two clashed against one another at speeds faster than the eye could see. Saitama told them to stop fighting in front of his new place, and told Geno specifically to stop. And just like that, Geno stopped dead in his tracks, much to Flashy Flash's surprise. Leaping back to the walkway, he mocked Genos for being such a loyal dog. Speaking to Saitama once again, he confirmed that the hero had been promoted to A-Class. He claimed to have brought the guy a good prospect to celebrate his promotion, yet all he received in return has been rudeness. Genos asked his master if he knew the guy, which Saitama kinda did from the previous arc. He even decided to introduce them. He referred to the man as a hero four locks in the face. Genos nodded, but the ninja angrily responded that that was just a nickname Saitama gave him on his own. King was sweating and tried to tell Saitama the guy's name, but Flashy Flash interrupted him and told him not to say it. He stated that people like Saitama have a habit of asking others immediately. At this rate, he would never learn it. 
so he wanted Saitama to try and remember on his own. Genos was not fond of the hero's attitude here. He hoped for the sword wielder's sake that he wasn't pretending to be Saitama's master. Saitama tried his best to recall, but struggled and started off in the wrong direction. As he kept going, he got a little bit closer to the mark. Eventually, it seemed like he had it on the tip of his tongue. Clavicle Smash. That is one hell of a name. And although Genos figured it was close enough, Flashy Flash was not too pleased. He marched towards the bald man who had fallen, believing that he was doing this on purpose. Saitama shakily told the man not to just enter his home uninvited. Now closing the door, Flashy Flash claimed that the two of them had a confidential hero association matter to discuss. He respectfully asked King to leave them alone for now. Then he turned to Genos and said that the dog could go sit somewhere. Then he promptly closed the door. While sipping tea from a chip cup, Flashy Flash insisted on Saitama becoming his disciple. I vaguely remember the cup cracking, but can't seem to remember when it happened. If you know, please drop a comment. After seeing what the bald man was capable underground, he was sure that his athletic abilities were overflowing with potential. He believed that right now, Saitama wasn't even making use of half of that potential in battle. And if he received proper guidance, there's no telling what he would be capable of. This might sound ridiculous, but he is kind of right in a way. If he actually accepted any kind of proper guidance, he might be able to do even more. But before Saitama could respond, Genos appeared from a hatch in the wall to reject the offer on his behalf. This shocked Saitama terribly, as he didn't want Genos making peepholes to his house. Genos was quick to apologize. He made the preparations in case of unforeseen circumstances. But according to Saitama, the only unforeseen circumstance was Genos himself. The cyborg then questioned the notion of confidentiality here. If this conversation was in any way related to the threat of God, his involvement was not up for debate. Flashy Flash scoffed and continued drinking his tea, but didn't reject him. First and foremost, he wanted help finding Monaco. Saitama questioned what he said about a witness. He wondered what he was supposed to do after he finds the thing. He questioned if he should rough it up to make it spill information. The one thing he distinctly remembered was that the monster made for a good flashlight. Flashy Flash was not opposed to the idea, depending on how the creature reacts. He wanted to glean even the faintest of clues in regards to Blast's enemy, God. And Monaco was a valuable contact. Flashy Flash admitted that it might just be a gut feeling, but he believed that with only a few more small pieces, they would be able to uncover a huge secret related to God. A secret so monumental that it could serve to shake the very ground beneath their feet. Which sounds really exciting to me. We are being prepared for absolute insanity. At which point he rose to his feet and told Kate Baldy to follow along. Saitama got up and followed him all the way to the door, which he closed. Once it opened back up, the S-Class hero told his junior to quit it with the practical jokes. He hated dumb jokes most of all. Saitama languished the thought and said that he couldn't possibly get along with someone that calls him by his hero name. With a smug smile on his face, Genos told Flashy Flash to go sit somewhere. With a single leg, Flashy Flash slammed open the door as they dodged out of the way. With a more serious expression, Flashy Flash now insisted that Saitama fight him one on one. That way, he would be able to show the guy just how inexperienced he really is. First Tatsumaki, then Genos, and now Flashy Flash. Saitama's list of challengers only continues to grow. You guys absolutely crushed a light goal on the previous chapter, so thank you for that. We're still working on that bomb video, so please look forward to it. As always, I'm Slice Motaku. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day. I love you.